Hi everyone, welcome to today's final episode of the season. We are discussing and rounding up success and its connection with well-being. So in the last two podcasts, we discussed that success is dependent on the individual. It's a relationship between success, relationships, money, and now we're talking about success in relation to well-being. And more specifically, is well-being the keys to success? Or are we even able to enjoy success if we do not have good health and well-being? But before we begin, thank you so much for supporting us either on YouTube or Spotify. If you are part of Podbean, thank you so much for taking time to listen there too. If you're not aware already, we are on Patreon. Just for the price of a cup of coffee, you can support both Kelly and I and Unapologetically You. Head over to the description. You can find out how to support us. And also, I know Kelly and I would both appreciate if you know of anyone who can benefit from this podcast, or even if you've uh, had certain episodes of the season that you enjoyed, share this with your family and friends and then let us know how, what they think. Maybe that can rile up a discussion between you two. But without further ado, my awesome co-host, hi! Hello, can you believe it's the last episode? It's oh, gone so it? fast. It's gone fast. It's gone right? really fast. But oh my it goodness, like did we put a lot of effort into this? <laughs> a lot of hours and a lot of effort and a lot of effort, more so from your side. And I think I've said before how grateful I am for you and all the work you put in. Um, yeah, but going all, back it is to, true. I appreciate that and I'm not dismissing it, but going back to what we class as success in this podcast alone, not only did we... Um, veer away from the traditional interview host podcast theme but it was the consistency that we both brought it was the success on what we were learning about each other we were learning about the topics of conversation hopefully impacting other people's um, experience and understanding of certain health and well-being especially around exhaustion and around you know um self-sabotage and well-being meditation we we spoke about all sorts in this podcast and now we're ending with success so I feel like we started with exhaustion and fatigue <laughs> ways that people are going <laughs> to overcome that and now we're on to success and well-being right yeah yeah no, I like that circle it's good so according to the dictionary team you've looked this up what is success <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me. <laughs> I can tell you. According to the dictionary, and I like this um, uh, this definition, it says success is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose, the attainment of popularity or profit. Mm-hmm. Now, the last part is, I guess, what most people would determine success as. Yeah. yeah. But the of a name or a purpose is what we used as our definition of success for unapologetically you and I think we chose that also because in our own lives in our own careers in our own personal lives the accomplishment of a name or a purpose has also been our main driver I agree yeah but so, yeah. sorry what are you going to say nothing go well, I, geez, you heard me say, but. <laughs> I'm interested in what the but is. Okay, so but is success may be the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. You know what I'm like, Cal, two-year, five-year, ten-year plan, which I end up yes. obviously accomplishing um, within half of the time. Oh, yeah. But yes. the only thing is, is that it's still a success because it's an accomplishment of an aim or a purpose or a goal or a, a, a job or whatever it is. However, even though that's classified as success, I probably, it's almost like you change your mind. When you get it, you're like, well, I didn't think this was going to be this way. And it's almost like you heighten your expectation to a certain degree that it doesn't, it doesn't seem success. And it's almost like, well, you're not tarnishing the actual accomplishment. You're just revisiting what your definition of success is. Yeah. I was very passionate then, wasn't it? It was like, I found an epiphany. (laughs) (laughs) We have one every episode and this was, well, this one came in nice and early. No, I agree with that. I like that. Yeah. But. Oh. But. Let me with the but. But 
does that success, so the accomplishment of a name or a purpose or the attainment of popularity or profit come at the expense of being comfortable, healthy and happy or your well-being, does the state of being comfortable, healthy and happy define success? Again, it goes back to what we said a couple of episodes ago. It is very much on the individual. I think that I've got to the point where I've achieved a lot of things and my health and well-being had been affected by it, which meant it didn't matter how much I got. It didn't matter how much money I was given. It's almost like um, organizations can throw money at their employees. And yeah, it could help. Yeah, it could be beneficial to them. But if you keep throwing money at them and they don't feel valued or their well-being is suffering, their mental health, physical health, emotional health, if their relationships are suffering, that is where the tower uh, tumbles because it's just like you think you're at the top and you think you're successful. Yeah, you may be getting um, 100K a year or whatever, whatever money you think that you want on on paper if you're like this is what i want as a dream job if you're working 80 hours a week <laughs> if you're working that much and you're sacrificing your well-being yeah yeah, yeah. is that even so I think, no it's not and how about looking at it this way if you're successful but you're unwell you have no well-being that's what you're after. If you're successful but unhealthy, you want your health. Steve Jobs, perfect example of that. And if you're well and healthy and comfortable and healthy but you don't have success, then that's what you're chasing. So as humans, we're always tick-tocking one side to the other. I've got this but I want this. Now I've got this but I want this. Um, it might serve you well to choose the, the one you want first and be sensible about it because if I had the choice, well-being is going to be what I choose. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Do you think I agree with you, but I still had to think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me think. No, no. Honestly, I think that even though in the last podcast we talked about money giving us the ability to buy medicine, to have um, resources, hosp- you know, hospitals at our access if we are unwell if you know there is a disease and you need private health care like that has a massive benefit but the thing is would you even get to that place if you didn't have things that were breaking down it, it's a hard question to answer and the and i could think the answer is you actually don't know no. but um We've really got to put some parameters in place. Like if you're healthy but live on the streets, (laughs) like would you rather get COVID to have a house? Would you be healthy? Probably. You're living on the streets. That was a bad example. But, you know, if you lived hand to mouth, if you were paying bills in advance, like if you were borrowing from next week's pay to live this week, that's never going to end well. But you, you're you healthy and happy and, well, are you comfortable? Are you happy? You're probably what under stress. Might be, what might be a better example is, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, documentaries in India and you see the families in the shanty towns. Like, shanty towns is, you know, they've just got, they haven't even got walls, right? And some people Ooh. may, some people haven't. They've probably hey. got, like, tin roofs and, like, They are going to fetch their water. They don't really have anything apart from a couple of people living in one room kind of thing. And then you see a TV camera. This is insane. But you see a TV camera and the kids' smiles on their faces. And like, I know kids are happier anyway because they don't have life to break them down yet. But it's almost like um, you've just got people who are enjoying themselves. And, um, I think it was Trevor Noah in his, um, book. And he also talks about this in his comedy show is he says, when I was a kid, I used to play with bricks because that's all we had. I would pretend that bricks were cars or like, I would just be playing with bricks. And he was like, I would be happy. And, and the thing is, it's like, you're not then at that point 
and going, oh, well, I wish I had a car to play with or I wish I had this because you knew no difference. You were in this place and you were just happy being in that moment. And I feel like, just as you said earlier, we end up tearing ourselves on probably at a detriment to our well-being when we're thinking we need to chase this for happiness and success when actually all we need to do is look after ourselves and our well-being and that actually doesn't require very much yeah Yeah. right yeah and I think that sometimes we do get trapped in the definition of success being associated with money popularity status if we don't have that, we're not successful. But as we've already discussed, money gives us tools to attain certain levels of success. But then without fruitful relationships, we can't succeed. We can't fully enjoy those successes because who wants to be alone in a rich mansion, right? That'd be scary. I wouldn't yeah. like that either. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yet can't money buy well-being. Mm, yes <laughs> to a degree yeah to a degree and you know what I think a lot of people possibly including myself the the money that could buy the well-being is enough of a well of well-being um okay I didn't put that very well what I'm trying to think of is if you have a mansion and a lot of money but you live there by yourself could you by people to be companions yes yeah I think that sometimes people and this is just like from what I've heard but it's almost Mm -hmm. like people who it's like you said in the last podcast if you achieve instantaneous success you become overwhelmed because you you don't know how to deal with that environment right media can Mm -hmm. be very bad (laughs) it can be very good but it can be really really um breaking to a person depending upon which side well actually it doesn't matter who you are even if you're a good person media can break you right depending upon what my god absolutely what the narrative is of you but then the thing is it's just like you could be in a room surrounded by people and still be lonely. And I feel like in those scenarios, like you don't know who your friends are because there's going to be a lot of people who are just wanting to be there for the status, for the popularity, for the attention, because actually you don't know who you can rely on. And I think there's a lot of people who end up saying, I keep my circle small because there's a reason why people want to come at me they or they're asking me for money or even family members end up saying to them oh can you help me out with this project or that or can I get money on this and it's just like well are you here for me and the money or are you here for me as a person and a lot of times they end up being lonely yeah it'd be very confusing wouldn't it and uh knowing who to trust and it wouldn't take much to break trust either you know yeah yeah, no. Because people lie. I people lie for money. And I feel like they put money ahead of everything, including their well being. And like the very first podcast we talked about, at what cost um, is it to pursue and strive for success for you, what you think is successful in your life? And when it comes to your well being, you know, what's it worth? Because going back to that very first episode, it, we're burning out. We're in a position we love, but we're burning oh. out. Uh, I sneezed. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to mute it. Did I manage to mute it? You did. You nailed that edit. I love it. <laughs> All right. That was funny. Off you go. Sorry. I. I just lost the last little bit that you were saying. Yeah, no, I was just talking about um, well-being and talking about being in a position we love, but we're burning out. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that was and our I first episode. the Tony Robbins quote. He says, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Yeah, right. I think so. And that's very yeah. individual, again. Yes, yeah, and probably easy for Tony Robbins to say as well. <laughs> With his, like, like, 70 businesses. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, maybe it is it, worth his 
um, to Pence. Because actually, if he's thinking that, he's got the ultimate success financially. And then he's realized how much effort he needs to put into his well-being. Because he there was a documentary, I can't remember which one it was, but it was on Netflix a couple of um, months ago. And he did say, if I don't look after my health, he does ice baths, he does training. And the thing is, he's not going to be able to get that energy to perform in public he's not going to be able to interact with his audience Mm. because he's going to be fatigued so he makes allowances and he uses the money to then go right you know what I'm gonna do this I'm gonna have this um uh, ability to look after my health because I won't be able to perform in the way and and it comes back to even athletes if we say to an athlete you're going to eat this nutritionally are you going to be successful in your sport probably not if you if you give them a lot of junk food or um, additives and preservatives, they're not going to be able to perform at the best of their ability, which means they're not going to be able to be well in order to be successful. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's, there's there's so many little um, parts to that, isn't there? It's like yeah. many little bricks in the wall um and the more of them that you can look after the better but it does become overwhelming even to look after all those little bricks in the wall right yeah well I made a little note I said that we can discuss success differently in different points of our lives right so when we were young I don't know about you but I was really bad at sports so school sports day if I meant finishing you know in the top three or even five that would be success in our in our well-being right if I completed an a uh, marathon and a lot of people want to complete a marathon in the adult years that can be classed as success in, in well-being maybe yes. when we get to 60s 70s moving around without aches and pains or chronic illness can really be a success when it comes to well-being but are we typecasting well-being as physical only like in terms of yeah. What about mental or its association with relationships, as we said earlier? Yeah, well, I think um, more and more uh, mental well-being is being put um, at least on an equal footing with physical. Yeah. At least. Uh, and that might ebb and sway depending on how you feel, but uh, how your mental well-being is compared to your physical. So if you wake up with aches and pains, then that's going to be your priority. But if you're really, you know, dragging the chain, you can't get up in the morning, you're not thrilled to wake up and hear the birds and see the sky, which I am, and I have spoken to a friend who doesn't want to wake up in the morning sometimes, and I cannot imagine how that would be, cannot Oh, that would be hard. Um, and so that's that's a priority for that person, mm. right, over physical health. Um, but then they are so intricately, intricately aligned that an increase in physical health is a brick in the wall of mental health. Yes. Right? Yeah, um, I agree. Because the thing yeah. is, if you're suffering mentally or well, you're not going to want to prioritise your physical health, as in eat well, sleep well, read whatever you need to do for your mental well-being you're not going to want to do that because you're in this downward spiral anyway and then it just keeps going yeah yeah and yeah. they just mm, it, it's it takes a while for people to open up about it too yeah for sure even to themselves and not maybe they do give hints to other people but the the way they behave this is not critical. This is no. this is how strong they are. You know the way they behave. You go, maybe that was a hint, but oh my gosh, it's just maybe I got that wrong because he does not seem or she does not seem like that was that's what their life is like. So yeah. you, you kind of you that you do need to step up and ask for help or tell the truth and say, you know, I'm not being funny about this or I'm not just suggesting this. This is real. Um, yeah. And that's well. If you look at Robin Williams, who was suffering mentally and he had all the fame, he had all the success, he had all the laughs, but it was just a front, right? Yeah, as it turns out, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like even when people joke, don't assume that they're okay when they're posting pictures of them being happy and, you know, I don't know, just don't assume, just 
don't assume that you know everything. This is like one smidge of what their life is like. You don't know what's happening day to day. And it's similar to what we say with athletes, right? It's like, what are you doing for the other hours that you're not in the gym or the hours that you're not um, just eating wise? There's so many hours in the day you don't know what you're feeding. And that's what um, supports your success in sport or wherever you're doing. And I think that I really like the way that we're redefining what we mean when it comes to well-being. So I got this example from Charity Health in Mind, and they offer five ways to better our well-being. I know you're tired today, Cal. But oh, do I'm tired. I'm trying to pick up. I'm fine. I'm fine. But you're going to give me another test, aren't you? I'm going to give you another test. That's why I said. <laughs> That's why I was like, I'm going to test you. Um, can you guess okay. five okay. ways to better our well-being? I'm going to say relationships, and that's just not um, 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 a romantic relationship. Yeah. But, you know, family, friends, connections. I'm going to say that is the one. It is for me, and I know it is for you. It is for both of us, even with each other, right? Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the connecting with people around us is a great way to remind ourselves we're important and valued by others. I think sometimes we can berate ourselves we could criticize ourselves and that can it's so easily done it's so easily done and it's just like how can you remind yourself that you are valued not by just saying affirmations but go out with your friends you know enjoy local interest groups if you're in a new area you know connect with the community reach out to somebody you've lost in contact with right give them a letter or or let them know you're just thinking about them. Get to know your neighbors, you know, which I don't, I don't do. I know neighbors that are right down the street. I don't know my yeah, neighbors. you do. It's not in your, your next door neighbor. Um, yeah. But volunteering is also a really good way to yes. get to know your community as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and you actually tap into that in terms of giving, because you said it in the last podcast and, and even today, you know, how can you give more? And so even volunteering, you know, research has found between doing good things and increasing well-being, there's a connection between the two, right? Yes. Yeah, there is for me. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, it's a joy. It, it makes me feel joy. It's a very high-vibing feeling. Are you really proactive and do you make a, an intention to give every day? I don't make an intention to give every day, but I will, I, I listen and I watch and, and that sort of decides if and when. Okay. Okay, so here's an example. There's a little cafe around the corner from us where we're, where we're renting and they're doing it pretty tough. Um, another COVID was really hard on them because tourism stopped um, but they had bought the cafe. She's the chef. He manages it. So both of them are married couple. That's their income. They are exhausted. You can see it. She's a really good chef, really good. And I want the cafe to stay. So I said to them, what if I just sweep around the tables and, you know, do things that don't require skill really? Um and, I, and I'm just happy to do that, to take a job away from you so you can close up easily and, and maybe a little bit earlier or, you know, I'll clean the tables off. And they they were stunned. They didn't know whether to say yes or no. But anyway, I do. I do do it. So I go around and I sweep out and I'm not giving them money, um, except I, I do buy stuff there. Um, so that's one way that I yeah. give there. Then I love, 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 love um, paying for someone something. So mm. you know how it's like uh, pay it forward with a coffee. Yeah. I'll buy someone something at the cafe and um, I love, love, love surprising the next person um, paying for that. Um, I have uh, bought groceries. That was for someone a few weeks ago mm. now. Um, it was an older man and um, it, it was he, – he'd just forgotten his wallet, I think. But anyway, he was hor- He was so upset and so 
embarrassed. He was embarrassed and, and said, oh, I'll pay for it. So, you know, that was not Aww. an intent, but it, the yeah. opportunity was there. And um, it just made me so happy. And he was even more more embarrassed. <laughs> oh, bless. Um, yeah, but he was so grateful. And um, and I, I haven't seen him since, but I hope I do just, you know, just because yeah. he's my friend now. I feel like he's my friend now. So, yeah, but you um, are very intentional in your giving, aren't you? I, I think I, I'm, I'm trying to be more intentional generally. So, like, the other yeah. day I was exhausted from the weekend, which was fine, but in terms of I, I then knew instead of me feeling overwhelmed about what the coming week and the week and the month is going to bring, because I know July is just going to be insane, but I know if I didn't write my list of to do, or if I didn't write an, instead of saying a list of to do, what is my intention for this week? What do I need to do? And then I put a list of priorities and then low priorities on my list. Cause I was like, now that I've got it out of my head, I can actually just pause and relax. And even yesterday I pushed something back because I was like, okay, with all goodwill and intention, I've done what I've needed to do. Do I actually need to do this one thing? And it would have taken a lot of time and energy. And I knew I didn't have that within me. Um, so then what I did was push it back to next week because the rest of this week is, is a written off. Like it, there's so much going on. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be self-compassionate to myself. Like even though with all the goodwill and intention, I want to complete this task. And you know what I'm like with ticking things off. I, I like things. I like preparation, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I was like, I do want to do it in advance, but I don't need to break myself. And I just need to prioritize my well-being. So my intention was, have I done the essentials? Yes. Do I need to push myself to this? No. And then I even had time to go for a walk in the evening. So again, oh, should I just stay on the computer and do a little bit more work or should I go out and take care of my well-being? And I had a conversation with my parents then as I was walking and I, it was sunny and it was beautiful. So I feel like sometimes, yeah, I'm just trying to be a little bit more intentional about what my day is going to be like. I feel like sometimes we put so much emphasis on the goal and the mission, our purpose, whatever it is. And, and then sometimes we forget that. What are we doing today? to help us tomorrow what are we doing what are the little things that we're doing and that's going to build up to where we need to go in the future we don't need to know everything <laughs> just do just do know. little bits now yeah and that's where the yeah. giving comes in with intention because it's like oh the other day I just wasn't yeah this was yesterday actually I wasn't feeling great and I said to this Gosh. lady so she had packed her car, you know, when you're at the other side of the car park at the shopping center. So she packed her car and I just went over to her and I was like, oh, do you want me to give you the, uh, so we, we can either put a token in the um, trolley or we can put a pound, right? So they're not free in certain supermarkets. So I was like, do you want me to give you a pound and then it'll save you taking the trolley all the way back and getting your pound back, right? She was like, oh no, I've got my token in there. So obviously she wants her oh. token back, right? And so um, she was like, oh, but thank you. Thank you so much. I was like, well, I didn't actually do anything. <laughs> I tried <laughs> to save you that walk, but the intention yep. was there, right? And then yeah. when I was stood in line, um, I had quite a lot of shopping because I had nothing in my fridge and I had quite a lot of shopping. And there's a guy who literally just pulled up behind me and he had like, I don't know, maybe five things in his hands. And I was like, do you want to go ahead of me? And I yeah. rarely do that. And it's like, I, I come across as a nice person, but I don't do it very often. And I don't <laughs> go to people randomly in a car park, just going, shall I take your trolley for you? And I still needed yeah. to take the trolley all the way to the front of the supermarket. But I was like, yeah. what's wrong with me? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Who is this person? Who is this person? But I yeah. was able to see situations and rather than think too much about it, I was intentional with what I was thinking and was proactive with the outcome. And I feel like if I'm more and more present, if I'm more and more intentional, then I'm offering good things. Like, even if they don't take it up, like I said, it doesn't matter. Like, I think I was being, yeah, no, that's I liked that that's vision good. of me. I liked that kindness that was coming out. Yeah, you felt good, huh? 
Yeah. And it wasn't particularly, you know, like I didn't do a big thing, but we, we both know it doesn't have to be big to be meaningful. Oh, no, that's right. And neither of those things cost you money, maybe yeah. time, yeah, but not money. And so it just shows the things you can do that can change other people's day, sometimes their life. Yeah. Um, and I think that that then filters on the, what the charity that I was talking about had said those five things to better our well-being. And one of them says, take notice. So take notice of your thoughts, your emotions, your surroundings, and it's a great way to stay present and pay attention to our needs. But as I just so rightly said, this wasn't a segue. It just happened to come up really nicely. Yeah, yeah. And it just goes to show it's, it's we're appreciating at our surroundings, but also being present for the people around us. So what do people need around you? It's not just taking yourself and being in your own head it's like you know take notice of the things that we're grateful for big or small you know what can we do to boost our mood or even other people's moods um and I feel like sometimes it's like how can you notice and that's where I think the intention is coming into it like what's the intention behind this is it good intention okay great do it offer it yeah yeah there's a fun episode of friends where Phoebe tries to do something good without it turning it around to make it like she's done it to be good, but she doesn't necessarily want to feel good about having done it. So she doesn't yes. want to, you know, the upset I mean. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But I, I, I think that was, it was a fun episode to watch. But I think when you do good things, it should make you feel good. I mean, the, I think you- that the moral of the story, I think Joey was saying, now I'm going to probably butcher this, but it was, uh-huh. there was no selfless act. So yes. there is no selfless act of generosity because you're always going to feel good because of it. Right. It doesn't matter. You can't yeah. give or be, or will be kind without feeling good yourself. And Phoebe uh-huh. was trying to then go, no, I yes. can do things and not feel good. But every time yeah. she did something, she eventually yeah. felt good. So she proved Joey right, obviously. And she was like, I'm not going to live in a world where Joey is right. <laughs> <laughs> you but remember it's true. It true. is true. Yeah. yeah. You are going to feel so, good regardless. And I feel like sometimes that doesn't matter. If, even if you're doing good and you feel good as a consequence, like look at what we did with the gratitude podcast. Gratitude yes. is to help us feel good. But the more we help others feel good, we're going to feel better because of that. So research showed that if we are um, being grateful for others, that's going to be reciprocal for us. So, And that's like purely uh, selfish if you think about it. Even though we're doing it from the heart, it's still pretty selfish, <laughs> according to <yeah>. science. <laughs> according to science. But then I guess, you know, you've got to put a good spin on feeling being selfish. It's a, the best spin you can Yeah, on being selfish right so yeah but the more something makes you feel good the more you're going to do it and um and so the world goes around yeah and the last okay. two just the last two of yes. uh, bettering uh, our well-being one we've harped on about pretty much in this podcast is being active right how can we oh, yes. be active okay. how can we um Go for a walk during our lunch break, you know, or try activities that bring focus to the mind-body connection. I think we're sometimes losing the fact with a lot of distractions, a lot of social media, a lot of ways to not be present. We're ending up disconnecting from our mind-body. But if we're able to resonate with how we feel, what emotions are going on, um, our intuition, a lot of people mistrust themselves. And as you said earlier today, you said, People don't realize that they're suffering or they don't admit it to themselves. But if you strengthened that mind-body connection, you'd come to that conclusion a lot quicker and then hopefully resolve it. But, you know, do joyful movement, dance. How? When was the last time you danced, Cal? I'm not going to get you to do it now. How (laughs) funny. Today, with one of my clients, she's, uh, yeah, neurodegenerative. And so we dance. We learn dance movements. I have such joy in that. In, yeah, you're changing so, your yeah. physiology. The fact that yeah. you're changing your physiology changes your mindset, and this is why there was a study saying 
if you smile for at least 90 seconds it yeah. changes your physiology and That's actually it. whatever you were worrying about won't be unless you proactively go back to that thought and then mull it over but that's your choice really? yeah you're okay. choosing to be a martyr <laughs> and then yeah. choosing to like um ruminate over something but really your physiology has changed so that's a great way of well being. dance right. dance or smile and your physiology smile. definitely changes your hormones but last one yeah. keep learning yep. keep learning how yeah. to feel good and how to get better in your well-being you said earlier i think it was in our last podcast you said if things are given to you money wise like I still want to fend for myself I still want to do things I still want to and that comes with you know not only being curious but um what am I trying to say you're trying to be curious but you're also trying to push yourself into learning new things when you're learning new things you're boosting your self-confidence and then improving your your well-being absolutely yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah no it's a learning curve definitely uh and I think it's a really important one I don't want my daughter to be given everything and she at this stage of her life like with her grandparents she could she absolutely could yeah um but she's not going to get any money until she's 30 I think oh that's a good age yeah because sometimes inheritance comes at like um 18 years old or something, doesn't it? Oh or 21. Gosh, can you imagine? She would no. already have it. No. But she, um, no, and it won't even be all of it. It will be like a drip feed. Yeah. Anyway, the main amount of it will stay um, in a trust and she will get uh, an amount. But, yeah, up until she's 30, she's got to look after herself and, and learn skills. I think in the terms of the will, she'll get more if she earns a certain amount of money um, before 30, um, yeah. if certain things, does certain things, and and all of those, uh, the the list you said, keep learning and all the other ones you said, give, take notice, physical. So, yeah, there's yeah. a list of things that she really needs to tick off. That's amazing. Um, That's a really healthy way of pushing herself and then to a point where she actually doesn't need it. She can make her own way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do like that. I like that a lot. She's building her own resilience. She's building her own curiosity. But just as a final note, Hmm? what are you learning at the moment, Cal? (laughs) What are you learning to build your well-being? (laughs) I am learning, gosh, I'm learning a lot about working with neurodegenerative um, diseases. That's a yeah. big one for me at the moment. I spend a lot of time researching that and talking to specialists in the area. Um, I'm learning a lot about how to design a house, um, oh but that's a joy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I love it. That's joyful. Um, I'm learning more about, so when I went to uni, I studied food science and um, human movement, and food science was the first thing I got a job in I didn't do sports straight away and so I've gone back to that that really is an initial love of mine so how food affects um your body and your health and each organ in your body so that's what I'm learning about at the moment how this food affects this organ and how that food you know how this organ can affect everything else Mm. um and this has been brought to me by the neurodegenerative diseases as well um and what else am i learning um i'm listening to elton john's biography i've seen the movie saw it a few years ago and now i'm listening to it what an amazing man um and so i'm learning a lot from listening to that all right what are you learning oh my gosh i didn't you always do this to me (laughs) um (laughs) I feel like I'm not really learning anything, but that's a lie. Um, So I'm learning way more about how to harmonize your menstrual cycle. So that is something that I was really trying to understand over the last few years, you know, which phases of your period could help you in your performance. So when I'm coaching leaders and corporate execs, 
it's like they're already a class achievers, right? They're already high achievers within themselves. But it's almost like, well, if you the corporate world is built on this is what we need from you, and then the menstrual cycle is supposed to work around it. But a lot of people oh, yeah. have struggled with that. You know, they've got painful periods, they're probably not eating well, and it's obviously affecting their own well-being. But what I've realized is learning more about the phases of the menstrual cycle how it affects your energy, what you can pivot regarding your nutrition during certain times, and then how to manipulate your training program to peak your performance. So I really Mm -hmm. like that association of, you know, like certain phases of your um, period mean that you can probably nail a presentation you're probably more likely to go out on dates you're probably more likely to be social you're probably gonna you know nail that interview but loads of people don't do that and then as a consequence they're probably not performing to their best selves and then obviously aligning it with um a tracking monitor like hrv your resting heart rate and your like on whoop it'll be strain levels so cardiovascular output so it's almost like well what can you do rather than then periodize your plan according to your competition you can periodize your plan according to your hormones and then how you can peak performances in that way and I feel like that's definitely something that I'm enjoying learning I'm still trying to learn Italian still trying to play the guitar I'm learning yep. way more about astronomy <laughs> oh yes. and I'm, color- I'm coloring now I'm painting my um, watercolor so I'm learning how to manipulate palettes and watercolors and brushes and maybe I am doing a few things then oh I'm learning about investments yes yep and that's also being creative I think that taps into creativity as well which is another really healthy um mind building thing that we should all do be creative like I'm being creative with cooking cooking's my creativity Ooh, outlet yes I haven't done that in a while but I love yeah. that yeah yeah me too. Cal this is honestly again we can just go on for another half an hour yeah. but I'm just aware of your time and our audience's time and you know what this is a great opportunity just to say a massive thank you not only to you Cal a massive thank you to you Cal honestly but also everyone who's taken time to listen throughout this season yes. if this is your first podcast go back to listen to the season and obviously (laughs) this season is completely different from the first two seasons and I think for me personally I've learned so much about our own experiences like I've been able to filter out and eliminate certain triggers and experiences and kind of like feel at ease and at peace with being more vulnerable and I feel like I've learned a lot about you Cal and how when, mm. when it comes to our experiences, how it affects our well-being, the things that we can do to support our audience to find, you know, support, tips, tools, betterment of their own health and well-being. Um, yeah, so it's just been amazing. It's just been such a an amazing season. It has been an eye-opener and a learning experience and about our own relationship has deepened, I believe. Um, yeah. and learning more about you but also learning more about myself because you have asked some really good questions that have sort of shook me a little bit <laughs> I tend to do that <laughs> I'm not sorry <laughs> oh no and no need to be either it, it's a really good thing because so often you know people will tell you what you they think you want to hear even if you do ask a question yeah yeah well I'm glad I push you a friend said that yesterday she was like you push me, you trigger me. And I was like, okay. Trigger me. <laughs> but in a good way, obviously, in terms of they need to uncover more about themselves. But yeah, you challenge, you challenge them. You yeah, challenge me. I, I like that. I like that type of challenge. And some people don't like that. Some people want to stay in their comfort zone. And I feel like there is more to us, there are more to individuals. And how can I, not intentionally, but push you to be the best version of yourself? And it's up to you to to carry that through right it's not up to me to do the work um but I just yeah massive massive thank you for everyone who's listened if you found Mm. something good about this season let us know and that then gives me and Kelly an opportunity to say you know should we carry on in this format what would you like more of what didn't you like 
Um, we are obviously both of us constantly curious. We're constantly wanting to improve and get better into delivering the high quality content for your listening pleasure. So drop us an email, drop us a message. All the links are in the description box below. Hit subscribe on YouTube. Um, we're free to listen on Spotify and on Podbean. And then you can follow us to find out when our next season airs. But don't forget to support us on Patreon because we will continue to add more material. You'll see back room, um, green room um, <laughs> conversations. You're going to get a chance to get involved with the content planning for our podcast topics. And you never know, you could be invited to join us live. So thank you so much. Thank Love you so you. much, Gal. Thank you, T. You look after yourself. Have a wonderful English summer. It's, a, it's officially started now, right? It is. Not, well, not when this is, though. So that's fine. <laughs> oh, darling. It'll be depths of winter. It'll yeah. be Christmas. Exactly. All, all seasons have great things to look forward to. Ah, they sure do. Yeah. Maybe we'll have seen each other again before then or by then. Maybe. That'll be exciting. We'll have something to catch up on. Maybe we'll just record a few uh, podcasts in person. Who knows? That would be fun. That would be All fun. right, you look after yourself. All and, right. Um, we'll see you. Well, I'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye.